rope that's 20 feet long and you put a point, you cut it into 8 and 12, you know that 8 and 12 is 20. If you have a line, and you put a point B somewhere. In my classroom, the problems that. Uh, that stop education or hinder education are uh, many. First, the student basic skills. When they come into the classroom, they do not have, in many cases, the necessary math skills and reading skills necessary to take off from the beginning of the book and move on. Secondly, um, there are many students that come in with, uh, that are lacking in motivation because they're not quite sure where the math is going to take them. They're not sure whether they want to go to college. Uh, they really have no idea they're floundering. If you were to go into any high school, at any given time you might see 10 or 12 youngsters, possibly half of them, meeting the teacher's attention immediately. The teacher can only attend to one of those. If I stop and pick up everybody that is lacking in motivation, and, and I can't do that, frankly. 30 in a classroom yeah, makes it impossible to find are, and take right, all the individuals and work with them. What so what you do is you teach to the middle, upper middle in the class, and you lose people as the year goes on. And those are the failures, the academic failures I'm talking about. And among our problems is that we haven't developed techniques for teaching all of the population that we now want to teach mathematics to or science to. Because we've inherited methods from a time when the target population was only a portion of the children now in school. Crowded classrooms and frustrated teachers. Common problems in education today. Researchers are turning to technology to provide advanced tools to help teachers solve these problems. A new generation of instructional tutors developed by researchers at Carnegie Mellon University brings intelligence to computer-aided instruction. What we've done is we've taken our understanding of human problem solving from cognitive psychology and the techniques from artificial intelligence to build intelligent tutors that teach mathematical problem solving. The researchers use the psychology of how humans solve problems and how skills are acquired to build a model of how good students solve problems. Using Anderson's theory of learning called ACT STAR as a guide, researchers study these skills and create detailed simulations of problem solving knowledge in a computer. This computer simulation or ideal student model used as a reference for comparing a human learner's problem-solving skills is the heart of the tutoring systems. These intelligent tutoring systems can generate solutions to new problems, are highly interactive, and can deliver individualized instruction in real time. Building intelligence into a system begins with a student model where the knowledge for skilled problem-solving behavior is represented as a set of production rules. Each production represents a single piece of problem-solving skill. In the simplest case, a production takes the form of, if condition A is true, then do problem-solving action B. For complex tasks, productions set sub-goals to break the task down, allowing other productions to apply. By chaining these productions that set goals, sub-goals, or actions, the intelligent tutoring system can simulate complex problem solving. When a student is presented with a problem, the intelligent tutor takes the same steps in solving that problem. Many beginning students would distribute the three to remove the parentheses. A production simulates this goal-setting action. Just as humans can solve problems in many ways, the productions allow the tutor to follow multiple solution paths. In this case, dividing both sides of the equation by three. This production simulates an alternate goal-setting action. While there are at least two possible solution paths for this problem, the ideal student model should be able to solve the problem in as many ways as students can. 
This classic error of subtracting three from both sides is commonly seen by algebra teachers. And after simulating the same error in the buggy student model, the tutor, like the teacher, can give an appropriate response. When guided back to a correct solution path, the learner can take a number of correct actions to work forward to the solution of the equation. In geometry, students can solve a problem by working forward from what they are given or backwards from the goal. The student model can also simulate this forward or backward search, which the tutor displays visually through the interface. The geometry tutor's screen display graphically presents the solution path of a proof in sharp contrast to the standard two-column proof. Solving the proof begins with a statement to be proven at the top of the screen. And information which is given is at the bottom. From the goal, students can make a backwards problem-solving step or they can work forward from what they are given. When the problem is completed, the student has built a connected structure from the givens to the goal. By graphically representing the structure of the proof, the relationship between the statements and reasons are made more explicit. The tutor reinforces the conceptual idea of what a proof is and, on a higher level, deductive reasoning. The student model and the interface are coordinated by the tutorial component, which contains the knowledge for when to interrupt, how to diagnose errors, and what kind of feedback to give. From ACT STAR, a theory of learning by doing, come principles that guide how the tutor responds. If the student requests help or makes an error, the tutor will respond with a general hint. If the student still makes an error or takes the initiative for requesting additional help, the tutor will respond with a more specific hint. The student can always check what geometry rules can apply, review, and continue solving the proof. The tutor will not interrupt if the student strays off known solution paths or explores new ones as long as the steps taken are legal inferences. When the proof is completed, the student can reflect upon the steps that are used in the final solution path, and those steps not used are left unconnected to the final solution. Behind the scene, completed problems and student actions are recorded in student histories. Like a human, the tutor remembers the specific actions a student has made while learning on the system. The LISP tutor, which teaches the programming language LISP, continuously monitors the student's progress and errors. The tutor uses the individual student history to make decisions about how well that student has mastered the material, when to present new information, or what remedial problems to assign. As the student solves a problem, the student's history is updated. If the student has mastered the skills for that lesson, then the tutor allows the student to go on to new material. If the student needs too much help while planning or writing the LISP code, the tutor may give the student remedial problems to exercise weak skills for this or previous lessons. Working together, these components adjust instruction to the size of a learner's problem-solving steps. As students improve their skills, they do more of the work in their heads taking larger steps. 
the tutor adjusts the instruction to match the size of these steps, adapting the grain size to the evolving skill. In solving this problem, the student has used many steps, including explicit sub-steps for distribution. and for getting the constants on one side. And isolating the variable. The next student only needs to use the tutor for the first step. She skips steps, solving the majority of the problem in her head. Without explicitly performing the last step. As students progress through the curriculum, Receiving individualized instruction, they gain many of the benefits of having their own personal human tutor. In the standard classroom, by definition, 50% of students perform above the average. By adding traditional drill and practice or computer-aided instruction, performance can be improved. With intelligent tutoring systems, classroom and laboratory studies show a significant improvement above computer-aided instruction. 84% of students perform above the average classroom student, approaching the effectiveness of personal human tutors. Since 1984, the LISP tutor has been used as a teaching tool, tutoring students through an introductory programming course at Carnegie Mellon, and commercially both in government and industry. Individuals using the tutor progress through the curriculum in 30% less time than students who had taken a standard lecture-based programming course. These achievements stem from the intelligent tutor's ability to diagnose the student's actions 96.5% of the time. One of the obvious challenges is to make this technology deliverable at a reasonable cost on machines that are affordable by schools. Since intelligent tutoring systems can generate instruction for new problems without the cost of additional programming, new or modified lessons can easily be added to the system. And by pre-compiling the solutions and errors, the geometry tutor has been adapted to a microcomputer, making these systems cost-effective for today's classroom. After more than a year of classroom testing, the intelligent tutoring systems have produced both improved learning and acceptance. Having the, the, the tutors in the classroom freed me up to do all the quality type things I would like to do on an individual basis with students. And what allowed me to do that was the fact that all these other students had individual tutors that were helping them. I think it's good. It shows you step by step and it's like a ladder. You build it, you climb it. Uh, it works well. With the tutor, there are several ways that you can answer the problem, and I think that helps a lot, too. The tutor will interrupt at what we hope are the right moments. That, that's part of what the research is about. And help students to uh, not just to get the answers right, but to get the process right. Lots of times in classes, we just say, well, you know, forget it, just don't ask, you know, don't, you just let them go on because you don't want to feel stupid. But with this, you can just learn it, and you know it. You have to learn it, or you can't go on. If it were a person, sometimes I get embarrassed when I get it wrong. With the tutor, it just says, okay, let's just do it out. You know, it's not like anyone else is there that can laugh or anything like that. It never tells you to hurry up and go. It's not like a test in school. They stay close to the solution path, and they achieve results. They get answers. You can't go from one problem to another problem on our system without having completed the one problem. So they know it's right, and they feel good about themselves. One thing that's going to happen if tutoring lives up to its promise is that 
we'll take an average student who would take four years to go through the high school curriculum, that student will get through the curriculum in two or three years. Therefore, they're going to have uh, more time in their mathematics courses in high school to learn more advanced and more powerful mathematics. Intelligent tutoring systems, tools to help teach today's curriculum and to explore tomorrow's.